Hi everyone, Jorgelina here. Thank you so much for being here. Whether this is your first time, your second time, or you've joined me for all of my videos, I am so excited that you have decided to click on this one. This is going to be a very different kind of video from my pre-uploads that uh, most of my channel is used to because this is a dedicated teacher video like the ones that I put out at the beginning. Mostly I have been doing my teacher videos live, but when I went to complete this activity, unfortunately during that live, there was no sound. So I wanted to make sure that I put this out there so that everybody can enjoy these freebies. These are really popular in the teacher community. So I wanted to make sure that this was available and ready to go for anybody that wants to use them. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to edit these to add your own questions. I will be putting in the description box everything that I show and it's always for free. So you are welcome to download everything and work off the template the same way that I am going to show you how to work out of the templates. So today during the live, this is what I created. So this is a multiplication one and I showed everybody how to change the answers so that it works. So the premise of this is that students have all the choice. Right, so students have the choice to work out the problems and answer according to how they want their pumpkin, I guess, to look. Right, so on this one, for example, let's say I chose to answer nine times nine. So the answer to that one is 81. Right, so here is my pumpkin. Let's say I chose to answer option D, that would be 32. Let's say I chose to answer D, but my answer is incorrect, right? Nothing happens because 30 doesn't match any of these. Okay, so um, it's, oop, that was not it, six, right? So you answer the ones that you want. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna answer just column A, 30, 28, um, 16, 27, 36, and 20. Okay, so this would be the pumpkin that they that would end up with if they answered all A. Uh, so you are definitely going to have those students that want to answer different questions because they don't like the way this pumpkin looks, right? This is not your ideal pumpkin. So you're gonna have kids playing around. You're, you're also going to have kids that maybe just pick the ones that they're really comfortable with, right? So maybe they're just really good at multiplying twos. That is my cat going insane in the background. I am so sorry. So 14, the next one is 16, right? This one, another 16. Uh, this one, maybe, well, there's no two on this one, so they're really good at uh, eight. So this one is 24. All right, I was forced to stop that recording <laughs> because my cat was going insane. But hopefully you get the point, right? The students have all the autonomy on how they are going to answer so that their pumpkin looks a certain way. So that's one way to use the templates. I'm just gonna explain that right off the bat. This one, if you teach third or fourth grade and you're going through multiplication or you want your students to have some practice, will be linked in the description down below. I'm gonna uh, delete the answer so that it's ready to go for your students. Okay, so I'm gonna close this one out because I already explained how this one works and I will not be changing this. This is another one. Okay, so this is a very fun one. No math, nothing like that. This is the other one that I created. So when you look at this, students start off same way, but on this one, they are choosing a task card because it has a lot more text. So I went through this one and I typed in the answers and the choices during that live. On today's live, instead of typing, because we all know how to type into cells, I'm going to be inserting an image. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, so for example, I'm gonna click on that, go to task card one, and my first question here is, would you rather have a superpower that lets you fly anywhere you want, be invincible, uh, whenever you choose, be invisible, whenever you choose, read people's minds, blah, 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 right? So these are questions, again, no math. So I'm just gonna put, put D on this one, control time. And then I'm gonna switch to the next one, task card two. Would you rather live in a tree house, a spaceship, a mansion, a castle? Let's say I wanna live in a castle. Task card three, right? So th these are just very, very fun questions. I'm just gonna answer 
just randomly. And this is what they would end up with if these students chose these for would you rather. So again, this is just maybe an icebreaker, a brain break, um, something like that where it's just fun. I'm actually looking at this and I might wanna change this to be to the top. Might be a little better. That looks nicer, I think. All right. Okay, so this is this one. This one will also be linked in the description. So again, no right answers for this one there. Pumpkin looks a little funky, okay? So I will be doing both in, my, in here, showing you how to get these results depending on what you want, okay? But there is another one that I didn't create and I will be doing this for mine as well. And let me close this one out. So here is this one. Okay, so let's say you want the ideal pumpkin. You want this to self-check. There are specific answers that you need so that, you're, so that you can self-check, right? So this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm going to be making an AP stats multiple choice type of question. So students are typing an answer and they need to get it correct, okay? If they don't get the answer correct, let's say for this one, I want the correct answer to be D, but let's say they type in A. Okay, they're still going to see something change, but the answer is not going to be correct because nothing's going to change down here. Okay, so notice how this is changing here, right? So this should be 100% because this is the picture that I want. Okay, this is the picture that I want. So what I'm going to do is what I created, the questions, because I did a lot of the pre-work, I already have my questions ready, I went through and I this is the answers that I want. Okay, so these are the answers that I want. So when I typed up the questions, I put them in this order, okay? So using the other template, using this one, they work the same. Here's another option for your uh, face. This would be the face that they end up with, and these are the answers that are coded to this. Let's say you don't like this face, you hate this face, and you want a completely different face. So what you can do is you can play around with it. Okay, so I have put in here what triggers each of these answers. So the first one's the color. Okay, so maybe you don't want the orange one. Maybe you want your answer to be this yellow one. Okay, so you want B. Notice how this has changed down here. So we're gonna have to fix that. Uh, now the two and four are the eyes, right and left. So maybe you want them to match, maybe not. So if you want them, like maybe you want this happy eye, right? Or maybe you want this I. So now I need to figure out D, uh, which one's the matching I. It's not A, B, it's B. Okay, and maybe you, you're happy with that nose and you're happy with this mouth. So now this pumpkin looks okay. Okay, so this is the pumpkin that you want. Okay, so you want your students to have those right answers. So you would be creating your answer key with these answers here. And we want the students to reflect that here on their score. So how do you fix that? I'm gonna go ahead and double click. And when I do that, the formula comes up here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these letters into each of the fields in order. Okay, so they're in order. So I'm gonna change this one to B. The next one would be A. The next one is D. The next one is B. The next one is A, the next one is C, and the last one is D. So now it's 100%, and I want it to do the same on the bottom. The first one is B, the second one is A, the third one is D, the fourth one is B, A, C, D. Okay, so now your answer key is set for this face. Okay, so you can play around with it and find the face that you like and then make sure that you change this, okay? So this is if you are doing something that you're not letting the students choose what to answer, instead you are putting up some specific questions. And that's what I'm gonna be using for this one, okay? So in the description below, you are going to be able to find both of these templates, the task card template and this template here. Okay, so I'm gonna be working on both and then I'm also going to be showing you how to remove this, which is just deleting it, um, if you don't want it to grade like the other two that I showed. So let's start with this one because this is the first one that I'm going to work with. This is the face that I chose. 
I have already updated the answers and I have made the questions already. So again, that's the pre-work you'll have to do. Now that you know what you need, you're gonna need seven questions and have your answers ready, okay? So I'm gonna change this. A, C, D, A, A, C, and D. So it was the last two, C, and D. All right, so now this is the face that I want and this matches the questions. Okay, so for this one, I told you that I'm going to put up the questions and I already have the questions. I have them all in a folder. Let me just open up said folder. I thought I had it open. Here it is. And I'm just gonna bring it right up here so you can see it. Okay, oh, too far. Okay, so I have a folder with all of these task cards already and I'm going to bring them in. There's eight of them because one of them, I'm going to replace this one that says click on the little triangle. You can leave that there. When you make your copy, this is already gonna be there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on my other screen. And I'm gonna go to sheet two. And this is the ones that we are going to replace. You do not wanna touch this. This here, these questions here, is what's triggering this dropdown. Okay, you need that to be exactly the way it is if you want it to work with the formula. So I am going to delete, I only have seven questions, seven task cards, so I am going to delete these, I don't need those. But the rest, right, anything that you delete is going to be removed from here. So now on sheet one, it only goes up to task card seven, which is what I want. All right, so I'm gonna click on this one. I'm gonna go to insert image, image in the cell, and then just drag and drop from my folder into there. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the next one, insert image, image in the cell, and change to the next one, insert image, image in the cell, go to the next one, insert image, image in the cell, and the next one, this is repetitive at this point, if you wanna fast forward a little bit, you can insert image in the cell or you can also pause while you're working insert image in the cell you'll see what they look like right now in a little bit when i switch over and last but not least insert image in the cell and eight close okay so I have all my task cards here. This is it. You don't need to do anything else on sheet two. So you can, I'll, I'll talk about how to hide them in a little bit, but here's my task card. Here's my pumpkin. Here's my answers. Basically, if I wanted to give this to my students, I could, it's ready to go already. I don't like the way it looks yet. <laughs> I am going to mess with it a little bit so that I can get it to look the way that I want it to look. Uh, first, I want no background. So I'm going to remove the borders and holy moly guacamole i just realized i never made a copy of this so let's scratch let's take a pivot i'm gonna go to file make a copy <laughs> and this is going to be uh ap stats ap stats chapter five practice with probability with choice Holy moly. Okay, so let's pivot real quick because I've already shared this. So this one, my original, I am going to put it back to where it was. And luckily, maybe this is just another learning tip, something new that you learned. So I'm gonna go over to the history here, last edit. And I'm gonna go down here and this is when we started. So I'm gonna change it to where it's 100%. When is that here? So here we have the the pumpkin with 100%. So after I made that change, I'm gonna go to restore this version. There we go. And that's how you restore something if you made a bunch of edits and you need it to be the way that it looks. Please make sure that you make multiple copies if you want to. You can always come back to the video and make a copy though. So if you mess something up, you can always come back to the video. All right, so I'm gonna close this one because I don't need this template. And this is the one that I'm working on. Phew prices averted. Okay. I removed the, the box because I didn't like it. I don't like how it just kind of blocks it in for this particular one. 
if I go and I edit this, if I just make them bigger, my task cards are going to automatically move with me. They're gonna resize with me. And I like that. I want them to be nice and large and in charge. <laughs> um, so this is my choose a card from the drop down above, right? They see this drop down and they are going to select their card. So now when they select the first card, this is what it looks like. The other thing you can do is you can change the background. You can make it as big as you want until it's that size, but I kind of really like this color. So on Google, you have this really cool uh, picker tool if you are using Chrome. So I do want to change it to that exact color. Now it makes it slightly bigger. It looks nicer. It's nice and filled in. You can even change the background of the entire thing if you wanted. I'm not going to go that far. But what I'm what I am going to do is I'm going to give myself a nice border. So I am going to select the top row holding down my control or command key. If you're using a Mac, I am going to select the border and I am going to make that border. Uh, let's go with this green here, that leaf green. And then I think I'm going to delete. Yeah, let's remove one from there. And then I'm going to select the second row and column from the border. And I'm going to make that one the same peachy color, I think. Nope, I hate it. Not that color. Maybe I'll make it black. Eh, I don't like it either. Mm. It's all right. I don't hate it. I guess I don't hate it. I'm going to leave it like that. And then the last thing that I need is my title. So I am going to add a title. This is no, it's not a would you rather. This is an actual activity. So multiple choice practice. Or probability, I guess. Probability chapter five. And really, I think hopefully if you are teaching with the same book, this will be the same. Actually, let's remove that chapter five so anybody can use that. There we go. I know I keep changing my mind. So here is the finished activity. I will go ahead and I will link this as well. Um, and now let's talk about the multiple copies that I make. OK, so I'm going to uh, talk about right now how to hide your task card. So if you use the picture task card or if you type things in, you want to hide this. Um, again, students aren't getting their answers or anything like that, but just so that, you know, they're not deleting this and messing with your template uh, once you assign it. So I like to go from B all the way to Z, make it really tiny, right click and hide. And then I'm going to make this one really tiny. So now it virtually looks like there's nothing there. If you want to go even further, you can highlight the whole thing and make even the row smaller. Now that's there's really nothing there. They'd have to really go in here and dig. And then I'm going to go to sheet two, right click and hide. This is now officially your answer key. OK, so I am going to change here. That answer key. <coughs> and then I'm going to file, make a copy. And from here, this is going to be my student sheet. All right, and the student sheet gets no answers. And it also gets that as the first one. Okay, so this is what students see when you assign this through Google Classroom or through um, or I use Canvas, for example, or through Canvas or whatever uh, you use to share. OK, so this is also going to be linked in the description. I will likely link the answer key. That's what I'm going to link in there in case you teach stats and you want to use this. I'll go ahead and link the answer key so that you can erase the answers yourself and then you have a copy of the answer key. Okay, you can always make it once you get to 100 percent, but this is what this one looks like that's activity number one. All right, let me close this one out. 
And now we're gonna be working with this one. I'm not going to forget to make a copy on this one. So I'm gonna file, make a copy. And this one will be a would you rather. And I'm gonna call this would you rather version two because I already made one. Okay, so this one, very much the same. If you don't want this to, uh, because we're not gonna be correcting this, right? And we're gonna keep the answers, right? You would make the answers how you want them, yada, 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 right? All that that we already talked about. But I'm not keeping those answers, so I'm gonna delete this. And then I like to merge and unmerge so that it's virtually gone. The other thing that you can do is you could just completely delete it because you no longer need it. You don't really need that space either. How are you not working with me? So you just select and delete. All right, so now it is gone, gone. Okay, so this is gonna be would you rather. I don't need to change the title or anything like that. This is where we would type in the questions and then this is where we would type in the answers. Okay, so if you want your answer choices to just be A, B, C, D, right? Then you could just type in A, B, C, D, right? So, I mean, you can direct your students to type in A, B, C, D and be okay. What I want because of the video, I am going to want my students to type in the actual word here. So what they choose, I want them to type that here, okay? So that's so that I can show you how to change those answers um, if you're making a math activity like the one I made, that they're not typing in A, B, C, D. They're si solving a problem. So I am going to leave these here for now, but then I am going to delete this. Okay, so I am going to delete these um, options. I'm just going to call them option one, two, three, four, so that they don't, um, so that students are not tempted to type in a letter. Nothing's going to work if they type in a letter. Okay, so for this one, I also do have the questions in advance. It's just, would you rather questions like the other ones, but um, they're just easier to type. There's not that much words like the other one. So these are gonna be Halloween themed. So the first one is gonna be, would you rather? So they all start with, would you rather, right? Would you rather explore? Um, I guess explore a explore a haunted house creepy graveyard let's make this haunted house creepy graveyard abandoned asylum or a dark forest and Okay, so, so that you can get the gist out of this, I am going to type all the questions in. Again, you can fast forward this if you want to. I wanna do all the answers together. Okay, you can definitely do one question, one answer, one question, one answer, but I do wanna do it all in bulk. I think it's gonna be mo most time efficient and you can always go back and watch the pieces that you need. Okay, so again, I am going to right now take some time and just type in all the questions. I will talk through it like I always do so that I don't feel like I'm completely alone and by myself, but you can fast forward this part. I am just simply typing in the questions. So my second question is gonna be, would you rather be a vampire, be a werewolf, be a zombie, or be a ghost? Third one, would you rather get lost in a, a get lost in a cornfield at night? Actually, mm, let's come up with just one word. I guess we don't have to, put, just cornfield. <laughs> just one word, it's easier. Cornfield, pumpkin patch. maze or carnival question number four would you rather wear a would you rather wear a 
Now I'm just realizing here. I really don't want these to be capitals because it's a sentence, right? This is what happens when you come up with things on the fly. What I like about these is that um, if students are actually answering honestly because there is no right or wrong answer, they end up with really funny things, right? So they have the potential of ending up with like a very ugly pumpkin, <laughs> right? Ugly jack-o'-lantern, pumpkin patch, maze, and carnival. Okay, would you rather wear a... Uh, zombie costume. Zombie costume. Ghost costume. Witch costume. Or skeleton costume. This one I think I wanted to wrap. Alright, the next one, number five. Would you rather eat... Candy corn, licorice, Ugh, I don't like any of these, licorice, sour gummies, those I like, or chocolate eyeballs, candy treats. All right, the next one, would you rather have a pet? So would you rather have a pet, bat, a pet, Black cat, that's what I would want. Pet spider or a pet owl. Actually, I would want a, an owl. How cool, I already have a cat. <laughs> uh, okay, so would you rather trick or treat in? Trick or treat in? Would you rather trick or treat in stormy weather? Total darkness. Foggy, ooh, foggy streets, or freezing cold, freezing cold. All right, so we are done here with this part. Now we need to put in the answer. So like I said, I don't want them to type in a letter or a number. So I am going to just put option one, option two, option three, option four, and then I am going to put dot, dot, dot. Oh, I just thought of that too. This is where it starts. And there we go. Okay, so this is what they would type. This is what I'm gonna do, okay? So first, I am going to change this to letter A, okay? I know from the template that this is going to be affecting the color, okay? So what I get, what I accomplish for, from changing or deleting the answer is that essentially I see what changed in the template so that I can click in the right spot that's gonna help me, okay? So this is what I mean. I'm going to right click on the outline of the pumpkin because I know that's triggered by the first one. So let's do that again. Right click, can, uh, view more cell options, conditional formatting. Sometimes you don't need to go to view more cell options. My computer does that, but I know that not all of them do. So again, that's right click and you're trying to get to conditional formatting. Sometimes it's somewhere up here. Most of the time is that view more cell options, conditional formatting, okay? So now here are the four answers that I need to change for this. And then you'll see I'll do the same for the color. The first question is the only one that you have to change two things for. Okay, so here we go for part A, for uh, part one. 
A is, I'm going to delete what's inside the parentheses and I'm going to replace that A with haunted house. Done. I'm going to, does that not work? What, let's just, I'll go back and check. And then B is going to be creepy graveyard. Oh yeah, it just didn't. You can't read the whole thing. And then C is abandoned asylum. And then D is dark forest. Done. Okay, now I'm going to change this to the first one, haunted house. Okay, what I'm going to do too is I'm going to, I'm selecting all of them and I'm just going to make them um, because sometimes I need them to wrap. So I selected all of them and changed this to wrap. Okay, so now see how that worked when I typed in haunted house. I want the same thing for the background color. So notice how I didn't close the conditional formatting rules. If you did, you once again have to just right click, view more cell options, conditional formatting. And we're gonna change all of these just the same as we did these. Okay, so A is haunted house. B is creepy graveyard d is abandoned no d is dark forest i want to skip one dark forest and c was abandoned asylum it actually doesn't really matter which one you changed a b c it's just now it'll trigger something different so it wouldn't be the same answer key as the one that you made but just as long as you change one for each letter. Okay, so now, okay, I'm done with this one. The top one is done. Let's just make sure they all work. I definitely like doing that. I don't wanna close this. <laughs> I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna change now to creepy graveyard. That worked. The next one is abandoned asylum. That worked. And then dark forest, perfect. Okay, that's working, I'm gonna leave it there. Now, the next one, I'm gonna delete this and then I'm gonna watch really carefully to see what happens, right? A triggered this eyeball here. So I'm gonna click somewhere around there because I want those eyeballs to show up. The different, see how the different eyeballs showed up? These are in the background, but I don't have to do anything to these. These are already changed, they don't have letters, right? So from this one, from clicking there, I got A, B, and D. I don't have C yet, okay? So I have to keep an eye out for C. But let's change A, B, and D. So A is vampire. D is ghost. And B is werewolf. Okay, so I got all those, but I need C. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in C, and here's C. Okay, so now I can click anywhere where C showed up and I'm gonna change C is zombie. Done. All right, now I can go and check these. Vampire works. Werewolf works. Zombie works. And ghost works. That's it, that's all you're doing. So I will continue to work on this and then that's the absolute last thing you have to do. You would make the two copies just like I did before. You can change the colors around just like I did on the previous one. I will continue to work through this until I'm done and then I'll say goodbye. I hope that you found this useful if you don't stick around. But if you do, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. I put out teacher content all the time and I will make sure that I continue to do at least one video a week. If you haven't caught my lives, check that the description down below. I am definitely going to put the links to all those lives. They always stay. I don't delete them. I hold nothing back. Any question that you ask, I will be more than happy to answer. And all of the templates that I share are always free. So it would do me a huge honor if you follow me around and you come and join me on those lives at least once a week. I will skip a week here and there. You know how we get teachers get super, super busy, but I will share everything that I have. Always, I'm happy to share, put it out there, share with other teachers. You know how that goes. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so for this one now, this is the nose, right? So I'm gonna delete that. 
Here's the nose. A, B, C. I got all four. Amazing. So A is cornfield. It's okay if you put capital letters. This is not coded so that it's going to change. I think I may have misspelled that. Uh, pumpkin patch. And C is maze. And D is carnival. Done. Um, okay, let me see if I spelled that right. Cornfield. Okay, I did. Okay, now let's test it. Cornfield. Pumpkin, oh, pumpkin patch. Yep. Maze. And carnival. Perfect. All right, next one. B. Maybe the other eyeball. I got all four. Perfect. B is Bo's costume. A is zombie costume. This is what I mean. Look, I'm going to go and see, and I'm going to put the D one. Skeleton costume. And then for this one, I'm going to put witch costume. And again, it won't matter as long as you put one for each because they're all still going to trigger something. It's just going to be something different than it did before. So zombie costume. Ghost costume. Witch costume. Or skeleton costume. Okay, so these all worked. Yeah, okay, I got the same eye. All right, next one. This is going to be the mouth Put it down here, A, B, I didn't get A, B, C. Okay, so I'm missing D. I do want to remember that. Um, A is candy corn. B is licorice. C is sour gummies. Done. And then I need D. D is chocolate eyeballs. Perfect. And now let's check it. Candy corn, licorice, sour gummies, chocolate eyeballs. Perfect. These all work. If this can work with anything, it can work with numbers, it can work with, right? It doesn't have to be a words one. I made a math one earlier. So just so that you know, this can work with anything. Um, so that's why I wanted to show this one as well. There's going to be a lot of versatility in those templates in the comments. All right, this one. Oh, those are the accents. This one's going to be harder to get. So let me once again type in so that I can just get one of these. All right, so we're gonna we're missing A, and that's okay. We'll find it after. B is black cat. C is spider. And D is owl. So where is A? All right, here's A. And A was. All right, let's test it back. Black cat, spider, and owl. Perfect. And last one. This is the stem. I know that. So I'm just going to click anywhere in here. You can also just go do this. And the majority of them came up. Okay, so notice how on this one, D has two of them. So this is kind of your choice. If you want... D to, uh, let me move this up so you can see what I mean. You can get these stripes or you can have it be just black. If you want it to just be just black, you can delete this brown part. Like just get rid of it like that. Okay. I'm gonna leave, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave the just black part. I'm gonna delete that. Cause I do like how that looks better than with the stripes. Okay. A is Stormy weather. B is total darkness. C 
is foggy streets. Notice how C has two. The reason for this one is because it has two colors on the stem. I'll show you what I mean when I change it to foggy streets later. Foggy streets and the last one is freezing cold. Done. Okay, so now I'm gonna just test foggy streets. That's because this one has a little dot, so it has two, two colors on it. So stormy weather works, total darkness, and freezing cold. Perfect. We are done. All right. Here is a would you rather. Okay, so would you rather, and I am going to once again give myself a border. I just like the way that it looks. I feel like it looks cleaner. On this one, I am just going to give myself a black border. And then on the inside, I'll do orange. That's very Halloween-y. And let's use the same orange. Perfect. So there is my would you rather activity where I showed you how to change the answers. I hope that you found this uh, video useful. I hope that you end up creating something for your class or taking one of the ones that I made and using them. Please leave me a comment if you do. I absolutely love to interact with you. There are so many other videos that I have put out that you can use and take advantage of the templates. Again, I am sharing everything. Your subscription to my channel, just subscribing, which is completely free, means the world to me. Just watching my channel grow and knowing that I am helping teachers and other students, not just my own, really goes a huge way. Right? I make these and I use them with my class, but I have a maximum of a little bit over 100 students each year. So that's the students that I am causing effect that they are enjoying. But if I share with all of you and you are in turn taking these and using them with your students, I feel like I'm really impacting so many more students. And that makes me so happy and I have so much pride in the work that I do. So again, please consider subscribing, leaving me a comment. Let me know how this went. If you need any clarifying, if you have any clarifying questions that I can answer, leave them down below. I am always happy to answer them. And I hope to see you on the next live or another video. Bye.